In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is the octave mass of the Feast of All Saints, where for eight days is commemorated the prayer and memory of all the saints, all the saints in heaven, those who are canonized and not canonized. They are called the Church Triumphant because they already have fought their fight here on earth. They have labored in their battle to get to heaven. And saints come from all walks of life, children. Many children were saints. Many children were killed for the faith in Japan and many other countries and openly professed the reign of Christ the King. During open persecutions especially, God has raised up children as our Lord said, if these children don't cry out, the very street stones in the street will cry out. And God has raised up children to stand up to emperors and tyrants and all sorts of heresies to profess the true Catholic faith. And the saints are those who already have the glory in heaven. Do the saints think of their family on earth? Do the saints in heaven think of their friends on earth? They're in heaven, they see God, so they have the source of all happiness. They see God as he is. Here on earth, we see him veiled in the tabernacle. We don't see his glory, but our Lord is here in the tabernacle. That's why you should make it a point to visit our Lord often during the week. Come and pray to him. Make a holy hour once a week or once a month, if you can, to pray to our Lord. And, and people go to the bar to drown their sorrows. But our Lord doesn't want that. He wants us to come to him to drown our sorrows. He's our father. He's our doctor who will console our wounds, console our tears, and lift us up and strengthen us in this battle. And all the saints in heaven, none of them except for babies who died before the age of reason, who were baptized, none of them got to heaven without a fight. They all had to fight. The devil, the flesh, the world. And they all had to fulfill their duties of state. Many were married. Most were not nuns, monks, or priests. Many bishops. Many popes. Cardinals. And laymen of all walks of life and occupations. Doctors. Lawyers. Like St. Saint, Saint, uh, Thomas More. And... And laborers, farmers, like St. Isidore the farmer. Holy brothers who worked many miracles, like St. Martin de Poor. One of the miracles St. Martin de Poor worked was, he was told by the superior, Brother Martin, you got to get rid of all the mice. They're in the basement and they're eating up all the linens. And they're getting into the linens for mass. They're, put, they're eating holes into it. And they're eating all the stored food. you got to drive out all the, ma all the mice. I don't know how you're going to do it. Set mice traps, but get rid of them. So St. Martin de Poor, he went downstairs and he called all the mice together and they gathered in front of him. And he said, look, Father Superior doesn't want you down here anymore. You follow me, I'll, le I'll lead you away outside the other side of the barn. And every day I'll bring food to you. But you got to promise me you don't come back to the basement. And they all nodded their head and they followed him out to the barn. And all the mice made their dwellings out in the holes and the trees and the dirt. And they never went back to the basement. And that's the, that's the little miracle that St. Martin de Poor worked. And it worked. They never went back. So, um, saints, we can never say that there are saints in heaven that didn't have to deal with what we had to deal with. Because there are, there's thousands and thousands of priests who are in heaven who were saints. St. John Bosco, St. Valentine, the martyr, and uh, just numerous priests. And all walks of life, every single one of us, in whatever state of life you're in, even if you're retired even, there are saints there, 
who lived in our state of life, which show us that we can get to heaven. We're made to be in heaven, but we got to fight to get there. And we got to pray to get there. And one of the surest signs that you will go to heaven is you have a manly and strong devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. You keep her rosary every day, you wear her brown scapular, she will make sure you get to heaven. A sign that you or I will probably go to hell is we ignore the Virgin Mary. We don't turn to her, we don't pray to her. That's a sign, that's a very bad sign. When someone does not have a devotion to Mary, it's not a good sign. Why? Because of all the saints, guess who has the greatest devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary? Jesus Christ the King, our Lord Jesus Christ. He, of all the saints, has the greatest love, obedience, veneration, and honor for the most blessed Virgin Mary, his own mother. Nobody surpasses our Lord with devotion to Mary. That's a lesson for all the Protestants who try to downplay our blessed mother and say our Lord doesn't want us to go through Mary, we have to go just through Jesus. But Jesus Christ wants us to go to him through Mary. As St. Louis de Montfort said, God came to us, Jesus Christ came to us through Mary. At her consent, at the Annunciation, yes, I consent to be the mother of God. Be it done unto me according to thy word. When the angel St. Gabriel appeared to her. At her consent, God was conceived by the power of the Holy Ghost in the womb of the Virgin Mary. And then he was born on Christmas night in the stable at Bethlehem. Born of who? The most blessed Virgin Mary, without any pain or suffering. She was surrounded by millions of angels, surrounded by a tremendous heavenly light, and in an ecstasy of happiness and bliss, Christ was born, and he passed through her womb, not the normal channel, he passed through her womb, as St. Gregory the Great says, as he passed through the wall and walked through the wall at the Resurrection Sunday and stood among the apostles, he didn't knock at the door and come through the door. He walked right through the wall. So he passed through the wall of the Virgin Mary's womb and was born miraculously. And what happened to the umbilical cord, people ask? Well, the umbilical cord, says St. Cyril of Jerusalem, just as when uh, the, the apples are ripe on a tree, you just got to, you know, tug very slightly and the, and the apple comes right off the tree because it's perfectly ripe. And that's what happened with the umbilical cord. It just fell off like a ripe apple. So it was through Mary that Jesus Christ, God, in the second person of the Blessed Trinity became flesh, came to us through Mary. So he wants us to come to him through Mary. And those who devoted to Mary have a sure, almost a sure sign that they will save their soul. And all the saints in heaven, every single one of them right now, has a tremendous love and devotion for the Blessed Virgin Mary in all their life they did. And the apostles had a great love for the Virgin Mary. They called her mother. They turned to her. So all the saints in the glory of heaven, they wait for us. St. John Chrysostom says, we are on, as it were, the, the soccer, our football field. We're on the field of this battle on earth. And we're up against the enemies, the devils, the flesh, the world. And St. John Chrysostom says, the stadium, all the crowds are the angels in heaven and the saints. And they're, they're on the sides on the, in the stadium cheering us on. Keep fighting, keep running. If you fall and you get tackled, get back up. Don't stay in mortal sin. Get back to confession. Get back up and keep fighting. Keep running towards heaven. Run on the legs of the love of God and love of neighbor. And their cheers in heaven, they cheer us on. And they look after us. It is true if we ignore our Lord, he'll ignore us. If we ignore our Heavenly Mother and the saints, they'll ignore us. It's partly true. It's partly true. 
Although our Lord, he's the hunter of souls, so sometimes he steps into action and will, for example, knock St. Paul right off his horse, put him flat on his back, and turn St. Paul from a persecutor of the Catholic Church to her, one of her greatest apostle of the Catholic faith. So our Lord will sometimes step in, and Our Lady too, with many, many graces we don't expect. But in the general run of things, if we don't pray and we ignore our Lord, our Lord will ignore us and we won't get the graces we need. So we got to learn from all the saints to have a great devotion to the saints and love the saints, pray to them often. When you lose something, who do you pray to? St. Anthony. St. Anthony, he's on the altar right over there. Fathers of families who struggle to pay their bills and support their family and lead their family and they might have wayward kids, what do we do? Turn to St. Joseph. He had to get a job in Egypt. He couldn't speak hieroglyphics. And the, the Egyptians hated the Jews. So it wasn't easy for St. Joseph. So he's the patron of good fathers of families and carpenters. And the students turn to pray to St. Albert the Great. Theologian students pray to St. Thomas Aquinas. And so forth and so forth. Doctors, lawyers, shoemakers, sawmill workers. Who's the patron of sawmill workers? Well, St. Joseph, he was a carpenter. And many other saints. So it's a beautiful reality. The, the, what's called the communion of saints. We say that in the creed. I believe in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. What's the communion of saints? Well, the Council of Trent defines this and says it's the communion of prayer and spiritual support and intercession between the three levels of the church. The church on earth, which is the church militant, that's us here on earth fighting to get to heaven. And it's a war to get there. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence. Only the violent take it, Christ says. Only the violent take it. The violent meaning not to our neighbor, but to ourselves. Violent to, if I'm prone to be angry, I gotta be violent against that and be, be more patient and be more meek and humble of heart. If I'm prone to be a thief and steal, I gotta withhold that, in, that inclination and, and only take what's mine and respect others' property. If I'm tempted to be impure, I must pray and pray to St. Maria Goretti, St. Aloysius Gonzaga, St. Stanislaus Kaska, St. Gerard Magella, St. Gabriel of Our Lady of Sorrows, all these pure saints who never committed mortal sins against the flesh, Pray to them for help. And this is the beauty of the, the saints. So they help us. So on earth we're fighting. That's what the church militant. And then there's the church suffering, which is the church in purgatory. Those souls in purgatory who are doing, we could say, penalty time in the flames of purgatory. Some of them are in ice, ice cold. And some of them haunt the places they were on earth. People always talk about the, the ghosts of Gettysburg and the battlefields of the Civil War. There are actual ghosts. There are souls of purgatory who walk the grounds where they were killed. And that's their purgatory, is just to walk the grounds. And we need to pray for these souls. And we can help them. They can't help themselves, but th we can help them by our prayers and shorten their time in purgatory. And they can help us also. And especially when they get to heaven, they were, they'll be forever grateful for the prayers you and I have offered for them. They will always be grateful and help you from heaven. And even from purgatory, they can help us. So have pity on the poor souls in purgatory. Have pity on me, at least you, my friends, the souls of purgatory can say. And how many souls in purgatory are forgotten by their families? Protestants don't pray for the souls in purgatory. They don't, because they don't believe it. They deny it. But the scripture teaches, teaches purgatory. 
That's a dogma of the faith. Christ refers to it when he says, you shall be saved, yet so as by fire. And then the glory of the church triumphant. So those are the saints already in heaven. They've, they've fought their fight, they've won their battle, they've kept the faith, and they're now in the glory of heaven. So this communion of saints is that inter intercession and communication between us on earth, the saints in heaven, and the souls in purgatory. And all of us can help each other. But the ones who are in the most danger is us, the church militant. Because you or I could fall in mortal sin, die unrepentant, and be damned forever in the fires of hell. That's the danger of being on earth. It's very dangerous. And that's why when, say, uh, one of the, a boy named Charlie, under St. John Bosco, when he died... St. John Bosco brought him back to life and said, and he said, Father Bosco, thank you for bringing me back. I can make a confession. I was about to go to my judgment. So he made a confession, and the boy saw, when he died the first time, he saw he was sentenced to purgatory. But God let him come back to life, and St. John Bosco heard his confession, gave him extreme unction, gave him the last blessing, and he asked the boy, Charlie, do you want to live back on earth or do you want to go into purgatory? And Charlie said, purgatory. I want to go to purgatory. I don't want to come back on earth because I could lose my soul on earth and fall in mortal sin. So the saints understand this. People realize this when they die. The danger of, of, of this life on earth, how easy it is to fall in mortal sin. And if we don't repent and go back to the sacred heart of Jesus and go to confession, we could be lost forever. And in hell, there is no getting out of hell. There is no end to hell. There is no relief of the punishments. Hell is very serious. And many, many souls, most souls go to hell. There's an account from one of the saints. I forget which one. But one of these saints went down into hell, and on that day... Tons of souls fell into hell. There must have been some earthquake or tornado, but a lot of souls just fell into hell. And one of the damned asked the saint, is it the end of the world? And the saint said, well, I don't think so. It's not. But it was just so many souls that day fell into hell. So St. Teresa of the Child Jesus said, souls falling into hell are like snowflakes in a storm falling from the sky. While the ones reaching heaven can be counted on the fingers of one hand. It's a frightful thing. But Our Lady of Fatima, that's why she showed the children hell in 1917 on July 13th. They saw the pit of hell and they saw the demons, the devils. And Our Lady said, pray, because many, many go to hell, because no one prays and does penance for them. That's quite a different theology, isn't it, from the Vatican II Church, where everybody goes to heaven. You're saved if you're a Jew or an atheist, as Pope Francis teaches falsely. Christ never taught that. And uh, the church of everybody's saved. It's, it's not true at all. It's not true. Most souls don't care about God's commandments, they don't follow him, they don't want him, and they go to hell. They choose to go to hell. And nobody goes to hell unfairly. God is totally fair <clears throat> and just. No soul in hell can say, God, you weren't fair with me. No, they all know I deserved hell. And there's many cases of people who died and came, came, before, they came before our Lord and came back alive on the... On the surgical table, and they realized they were given another chance. But many of them said, I knew I deserved hell because I died hating God. I died rejecting his commandments. So if we go to hell, there's no hope whatsoever. But on earth, we're in, always in danger of going there. That's why we must pray every day, and especially to the Virgin Mary, her holy rosary. So look at the beauty of this Catholic Reality, this Catholic dogma of the faith, it's so beautiful that we have our friends in heaven who are really our friends. They want us to be in their happiness. 
And if they could, if they could, they would come down and smack us and kick us in the rear and rope us by our hands and feet and drag us to heaven if they could. But God says, no, they have Moses and the prophets. They have Christ himself. They have all the saints and all the teaching of the traditional Catholic Church. They can get to heaven. They have free will. And that's the scary thing is the free will, the steering wheel that we can all turn, turn our steering wheel off a cliff or into a mud hole, and most do. So what a beautiful truth that we can turn to the saints. So every day of the year, there's saints honored in the church year. And in this octave of all saints, we pray to all the saints. So pray to them. Don't ignore the saints. They really hear you. Don't forget St. Christopher. He's to pray to for a tra before you travel. St. Christopher or St. Raphael. If you're looking for a good spouse to marry, St. Raphael is the one to pray to, to find a good husband or wife, because he united Tobias Jr. and Sarah in a holy marriage, in a happy marriage. If uh, any decisions, any big decisions we got to make, or critical, urgent necessities, pray to St. Pray to Expeditus, a Roman soldier, who was told, Delay your conversion. Don't convert yet by, the, by his pagan friends. And he said, no, I want to be baptized now. I'm ready. And he was baptized and he was quickly martyred. <clears throat> and he was a Roman soldier. St. Cecilia is the patron of music, musicians. St. Lucy, the beautiful little St. Lucy. Pray to her. Her eyes were gouged out. And pray to her also for holy purity of thoughts, purity and to fight impure temptations, because the Roman soldiers, they tied her up and they tried to drag her to a house of prostitution to defile her. She wouldn't budge. God made her immovable. So they brought a whole team of oxen. And oxen, are, you know, they can carry tons of weight, more than a tractor even, if you get a, a 12 oxen. They had 12 team of oxen pulling her with ropes. And the oxen were just digging holes in the ground. They, the oxen couldn't move. God made her immovable. So he didn't want her be, to be defiled. So they finally gouged out her eyes and chopped her head off. St. Lucy. So all these saints, every one of them, St. Tarsisius, the one who was martyred for carrying the Blessed Sacrament to another catacomb. And he would not... Expose the Blessed Sacrament to sacrilege or defilement. And all these martyrs, and look at the recent martyrs too, Father Miguel Pro, who was shot before a firing squad, refusing blindfold, shouting, Viva Cristo Rey, long live Christ the King. And this priest was shot and he, because, uh, because he would say Mass in hiding for people in their houses during the persecution in Mexico. So we could go through a whole long list of saints, and every one of them is this beautiful, a whole life. Imagine if Hollywood made a movie of all the saints. Every year they came out with a new movie of a saint that was well done, like Mel Gibson quality. That would be very powerful, and would inspire, and would inspire many people to want to be saints. But we have their lives. We, we have to read them, most of them, there, are the, there was a, um, an Italian group of movie makers who made a whole, a whole group of good movies. And they're quite well done. I won't say they're excellent, but they're quite well done, I would say. And they're in Italian. But I, I suggest, when you do, if you do see them, see the English subtitles. Don't do the English dubbing. It's not as good. It's better to hear it in Italian. But they did a movie of St. Francis and St. Clair. They did one of St. John Bosco. They did one of St. Philip Neri. There's one of St. Francis Cabrini in English. And uh, St. Anthony as well. So there's, there's a few that were done quite well, quite well done. And they can be very inspiring. Uh, the one in English also, with uh, of, of, of 
Father Peter Damien of Molokai in Hawaii, the one who worked with the lepers. That's also quite well done. So, and then uh, St. John Vianney, he used to always encourage people, read the lives of the saints. <laughs> read the lives of the saints. Because we always need models. We need examples put before us. How do I live? What's, how did the saints do it? And we can, we can learn from their lives. Uh, one little word of caution, <clears throat> common sense caution, is some people, when they read the lives of the saints, they say, wow, they fasted so often, they did penance, they walked in the snow barefoot, they beat themselves with the chains to do penance and mortify the flesh. That scares me. I can't do that. Well, we're not obliged to do that. There's an old saying from the spiritual authors, the saints are always to be admired, but not always to be imitated. So it's not always in following their external penances that we're going to be saints, but it is by following their love of God, their love of neighbor. That's what we're supposed to follow and to seek the will of God as all the saints did. So let's pray to our friends our big brothers and sisters, the saints and the angels. Pray to them often. Don't let a day go by without thinking of them and think of the souls in purgatory. The souls in purgatory think of us. They're always with us. John and Ruth, they're, they're right here in the pew. And Aurelia, they're right here. They know what's going on. They're, they're close to the family. And they can send their guardian angel to look after you from purgatory if they're there and from heaven they, they intercede for us. So this is what's called the communion of saints. It's a beautiful reality. And just think of the coldness and emptiness that Protestantism brings, that they, they, they don't believe in praying to the saints for help. They don't believe in purgatory. They don't believe in honoring the mother of God. So it's quite a cold and empty life, very dark, the Protestant depressing mentality. And that's why the modern world is is so depressed and so dark, partly because of Protestantism and Calvinism. That's the mentality of these heresies. But the Catholic faith is full of light and joy and full of beauty and self-sacrifice for the glory of God. May all the saints intercede for us and may they pray for us. And may the Queen of all the saints, the Virgin Mary, help us to be among them someday and be numbered among that happy gathering of, as St. John said in the Apocalypse, I see a manyam turbam, a huge crowd that no one can number, wearing robes of white and entering into the glory of the heavenly Jerusalem. These are all the saints, and they burn incense before the Lamb of God. That's their prayers from their hearts and their minds, glorifying God. And they fall before the Lamb of God, Christ on the cross, standing as if slain, singing to the Lamb, honor, glory, adoration, gratitude, and benediction forever to the Lamb. And that's why in the Mass we step into heaven already because the Lamb is sacrificed on the cross. The Lamb is here in the tabernacle. We, have a, we already enter heaven here on earth with the Mass and the Blessed Sacrament. The only difference is we don't see his glory, the saints do. And that's why the Blessed Sacrament should be the center of our life, especially here on the ranch, the center of all your work and play. And your joy and your sorrows should always be around Christ, the Sacred Heart of Jesus, who dwells here. You have the happiness to live like monks and nuns and priests whose lives are centered around Christ. And that's what we must be like. And you children... How often do you come and visit our Lord? He waits for you. He loves you to come and to adore him and just say, Hello, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help my family. Help us get to heaven. And to come and say a Hail Mary for the souls in purgatory. Our Lord loves that when children come to pray. And when you walk in, you take holy water, make the sign of the cross. You genuflect on your right knee. The girls need to cover their heads with veils because there's angels before our Lord. That's why you cover your head. There's angels before Christ in the tabernacle. So come and visit him often, every day if you can. 
visit our Lord. And he has many graces he wants to give us. And he does so generously if we just open our hearts to him. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. And for those who do not have recourse to thee, especially all communists and Freemasons and other enemies of Holy Mother Church, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.